Now let's look into this example so that we can connect all of this uh, together. Uh, the question is, we need to design a concrete mix for the following condition. So here we are going to explain the conditions uh, for this example and also the constraints. And it's required to solve this example using the absolute volume method. We have the weight method and we have the absolute volume method. The only difference in step number nine. In step number nine, we are going to evaluate the fine aggregate. So let's see the uh, conditions and the constraint. Uh, first, he need to describe the design environment. Uh, they say that they have bridge uh, pier exposed to freezing and subjected to the icing chemicals. So this information here is very important because uh, through this inf information, uh, I'm going to determine the maximum water uh, cement ratio. And also, uh, I'm going to uh, 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 know the exposure condition regarding the air in train. So this information here is very important. And he put the specified design strings, came out to be 24.1 megapascal. This is the value specified by the structure engineer. So we need to uh, work with this value so that it's going to give me a risk uh, less than 10%. Here I have the minimum dimension for my structure, the minimum space in between rebars, and the minimum cover rebars. Those three information are important in order to uh, check the value of the uh, maximum aggregate uh, size. The, ma the maximum aggregate size should be less than those uh, values. Of course, this one need to multiply by some factors. Also, in order to uh, 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 come up with uh, uh, value, compressive strings value, uh, for the material engineer, I need to know the standard deviation of the compressive string. The standard deviation came out to be 2.4 megapascal, and the number of the sample is more than 30 samples. Uh, if the number of the sample more than 30 samples, it means that I'm going to use equation 1 and equation 2, uh, and then I'm going to uh, use the larger value. Or if you are smart enough, since the uh, standard deviation is less than 3.5, it means that I'm going to only use equation 7.1. Uh, also here, he says that only air in trainer is allowed, which means that I have chemical admixtures, but it's only air in trainer, so I need to account for that. The available material, we are going to use cement, cement type 5, due to the exposure. Uh, regarding the air in trainer, the manufacturer specification, he says that I need 6.3 milliliter per 1% air for 100 kilogram uh, cement. So this information also is very important in order to determine the volume of the air in trainer. Later on, we are going to use this information in order to know the value of the air in trainer. Here also we have information regarding the coarse aggregate. Uh, he says that he is going to use a 25 millimeter nominal maximum size. So this one is the nominal maximum size, not the maximum size. So if this one is 25 millimeter, that means the maximum aggregate size is going to be 37.1 millimeter. And why I need to know the maximum aggregate size? Because I need to compare the value with those three uh, values here. Uh, also, he gives us the oven dry specific gravity, 2.6 to uh, 1. This information is important in order to determine the volume of the coarse aggregate. Uh, he go also give us the uh, absorption, and he gave us the moisture content. This value and that value, we are going to use them in order to correct the value of the coarse aggregate and the mixing water. Here he gave us the oven dry rodent density. This value is going to help us to determine the value of the uh, the amount of the coarse aggregate. Also, we have information regarding the fine aggregate. We have the natural sand. We have the oven uh, bulk oven dry specific gravity. This value is important to determine the volume of the uh, fine aggregate. We have the absorption and we have the moisture content. Those values are important in order to make the correction, the moisture correction, the last step. And finally, we have the finest modulus. This one is important to determine the uh, value of the uh, coarse uh, aggregate. So let's get started. Uh, like, I, like I told you, uh, I want you to print uh, this lecture uh, because you are going to, to go through the graphs and you, are, you need to uh, understand how did we get the values. So we are going to start with the first step. In the first step, uh, we are going to determine the strength requirement. 
We know the value of the standard deviation. The value of the standard deviation came out to be 2.4 megapascal, uh, and the number of the sample more than 30 sample. So no correction need to be applied. I'm going to use equation seven. This is equation 7.1, and this is equation 7.2. I know the value of uh, F, uh, FC and I know the value of S. So I need just to substitute in this equation and that equation. And the larger uh, value came out to be from equation 7.1, which is 27.3 megapascal. And that is expected because the value of the standard deviation is less than 3.5. So now we got the value of uh, FCR. Then we are going to determine the water cement ratio. In order to determine the water cement ratio, uh, I'm going to use the graph or the table. Uh, here we are going to use the table 7.1. So get back to this table here, table 7.1. The value of the FCR is 27.3. You can say that the value is 28, which means that, and here my, my concrete is air and drain. So I'm going to skip this column. I'm going to choose this column. Uh, the value approximately is going to come uh, to be 0 0.48. So now the water cement ratio is 0 0.48. So let's get back here. The value of the uh, water cement ratio came out to be 0 0.48. Of course, you need to use the interpolation if you are going to use this value in particular. But we have exposure requirement. Remember in the example here, we said that we have the uh, bridge beer exposed to freezing and is subjected to the icing chemicals. So because of that, I need to go to table 7.3. I'm going to look at the exposure condition and we have concrete exposed to freezing and zooming in a moist condition or the isers. So here I have condition on the water cement ratio. The maximum value for the water cement ratio is 0 0.45. So get back here. The maximum value is 0 0.45, and the value came out to be 0 0.48. So in this case, I'm not allowed to use a value more than 0 0.45. So the final value is going to be 0 0.45, because 0 0.48 is more than this value here. Now we finish from step number two. Let's go to step number three. We need to determine the course aggregate requirement. First, we need to check uh, the, uh, uh, the value of the maximum aggregate size Again, it's the minimum dimension, 1 over 4 of the minimum dimension, and 3 over 4 of the rebar spacing, and 3 over 4 of the rebar cover. Uh, they give us the value of the nominal. The nominal is 25 millimeter. It means that the maximum is one sieve larger. It's going to be 37.5 millimeter. And this value should be less than 1 over 4 of the minimum dimension. The minimum dimension is given, and also it should be less than uh, 3 over 4 of the rebar spacing, this value is given, and also should be less than uh, 3 over 4 of the rebar cover. Also, this value is given. So now the course, the aggregate size is okay uh, regarding the dimension. Now we are going to get to table 7.5. I need to know the value of the uh, nominal maximum aggregate size, and also I need to know the value of the uh, uh, finest modulus, which is given. The value is 2.6. So let's get back to this table. Uh, this table uh, table here is 7.5. The nominal maximum aggregate size is 25. I'm going to go with this row here. And regarding the finest modulus, the finest modulus is 2.6. So the value, the factor here is going to be 0 0.69. So this factor is going to be multiplied by the uh, bulk unit weight of the coarse aggregate, which is given. So uh, here is the value of the oven dry rotted density. This value should be multiplied by this factor, which we got from table uh, 7.5. So let's get, get back to our problem. The uh, coarse aggregate factor came out to be 0 0.69 from table 7.5. And this factor should be multiplied by the uh, uh, oven dry uh, unit weight. And the answer came out to be 1,160 kilogram per cubic meter. So now we determine the amount of the coarse aggregate. Uh, step number four, we have the air content. Uh, the, uh, the air content depends on the nominal maximum size and depends on the uh, conditions. 
in, in this example, we mentioned that we have uh, a bridge beer exposed to freezing and subjected to the icing chemicals. So we are going to uh, go to table 7.6. Here we have the uh, uh, exposure condition. We have definition for all of them. Uh, uh, my definition here is going to be severe exposure. Uh, go back to the de definition of the severe exposure. You are going to find out uh, our case is going to meet the severe exposure. And here I have the nominal maximum size, which is 25. It means that the volume of the air in trainer is 6%. But you need to remember that we have a range for this value. We have minus one and plus two. So the range is going to be from five to eight percent. So get back to our solution here. Uh, the value came out to be six percent, but we have a range. The range is minus one and plus two. So the range is going to be from five percent to eight percent. You can choose whatever value between those. Here uh, for the design, we are going to assume that we have seven percent. The uh, volume of the air in train is going to be seven percent. And in step number five, the workability, we need to go to table 7.4. We have recommended value. And the uh, bridge beer is a type of a column. So if you get back to that uh, table here, which is table 7.7, .7, we have the co uh, building columns. The maximum value for the slum is 100, while the minimum value for the slum is 25. So I have to choose between those uh, values. For this example, we choose, uh, uh, we say that the slump range is going to be between 25 to 100 millimeter. We are going to use uh, 75 millimeter. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go to step number six, which is the water content. In the water content, I need to know the value of the uh, nominal uh, maximum size. I need to know whether the concrete is air in drain or not. I need to know the uh, the uh, type of the aggregate. So in order to determine the water content, I'm going I'm going to go to table 7.8. So let's go there. Here we have table 7.8. Uh, uh, this part regarding the non-air in train and this part regarding the air in train concrete. So since my, our concrete is air in train concrete, we are going to ignore the upper part. We are going to, to, to work with the lower part. I need to know the value of the slump. Uh, we assume the value is 75. So the range is here between 75 and 100. The nominal maximum aggregate size is 25. And here is the uh, value of the water content. The value is going to be in kilogram per cubic meter. So the value came out to be 175 uh, kilogram per cubic meter. And it's very important point. This value, it has been made to, uh, assuming that you have angular aggregate, crushed stones. But here, our aggregate is rounded aggregate. So in this case, I need to use this table here, the reduction in the water content. Our gravel is a round gravel, which means that I need to subtract 27 from 175. Uh, many students forget about this step, but you have to be uh, careful about it. So the water content is going to be 175 minus 27 because our aggregate is a round aggregate. So let's get back here in this step. The uh, value came out to be 175 kilogram per cubic meter. But since we have round coarse aggregate is going to be re to, to be reduced by 27 kilogram per cubic meter. The final answer came out to be 148 kilogram per cubic meter. So now we are going to go to step number seven, which is cementing materials content. We know the water cement content from uh, step number six. Uh, from step number two, the value is 0 0.45. And we know the water content from step number six, which is 148 kilogram per cubic meter. We are going to use this formula. The uh, weight of the cement is going to be uh, the weight of the water over the water cement ratio. So we know the weight of the water, which is this value. We know the water cement ratio, which is that value. The answer came out to be uh, uh, 329 kilogram per cubic meter. But again, you have to be careful about this because we have uh, a minimum value for the uh, cement uh, uh, content uh, because here 
uh, the cement is going to expose to freezing and doing. And in this case, the uh, minimum value uh, is 3, 3, 4 kilogram per cubic meter. And this value is below that value, which means that I'm going to use the minimum value. The minimum va value is 334 kilogram per cubic meter. So again, you have to be careful about this step. In number eight, we are going to know the uh, uh, volume or the uh, weight of the admixtures. We choose 7%. So the value of the, the volume of the admixture is 7%. But we need to remember the specification, the manufacturer specification. For the manufacturer specification, he says that in order to produce 1% of the air, when you have 100 kilograms of the cement, you need to put 6.3 milliliter. So in order to produce 1% of air in train, when you are going to have 100 kilograms of the cement, you need to put how much? You need to put 6.3 milliliter. But our case is different because in our case, we need 7% air. And also, the, our cement is not 100 kilogram. Our cement is 334 kilogram. So in this case, I need to modify this. I need to modify this in order to know the, uh, uh, the amount of the uh, admixture. So here we have uh, uh, he, here we have a seven, not one. So we should multiply by seven. And here we have uh, the uh, uh, cement weight is three three four kilogram per cubic meter. So I need also to multiply by three three four. So this value, in order to produce seven percent of the uh, admixtures. Uh, for uh, a cement of 334 kilogram per cubic meter, I need to multiply by 7 because I have 7%. And also, I need to multiply by 334 kilogram per cubic meter because I have uh, this value, not that value. And it should be divided by the original value, which is 100 kilogram uh, cement. So let's say that, uh, for example, uh, our volume is 5% and our cement content is 200 kilogram per cubic meter. In this case, I'm going to multiply by uh, 5%. I need to multiply by 200 over 100. And the answer came out to be 147 uh, milliliter per cubic meter. So now let's go to step number nine, which is the fine uh, aggregate requirement. So in this, in this case, the uh, weight method and the absolute volume method will differ, right? In step number nine, uh, if we are going to use the uh, weight method, we are going to use, uh, 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 we are going to assume the value of the uh, total volume, total weight of the uh, concrete. But if we are going to use the absolute volume method, we need to assume that the volume of the concrete is going to be uh, equal one kilogram per cubic meter and the volume of the concrete is going to be uh, the volume of the water plus the volume of the admixtures, plus the volume of the cement, plus the volume of the coarse aggregate, and plus the volume of the fine aggregate. And I need to deal with volumes. But here, I don't have volumes. The only volume is the air in Triana. But uh, in order to convert everything to volume, I need to use this relation here. The uh, uh, specific gravity is the uh, density of the material over the density of the water. And the density of the material is the weight of the material over the volume of the material. And uh, I need to solve for the uh, volume of the material. The volume of the material is going to be the weight of the material over the specific gravity of that material times the uh, density of the water. Okay. Uh, some people use rho for the density and some people use gamma, but here, uh, whatever uh, symbol that you are dealing with, uh, gamma here means the density uh, of the uh, water, and this one means the density of the material. So first, I need to uh, uh, use this formula in order to determine the volume of the water. So the volume of the water is going to be the weight of the water. The weight of the water, we got that value, which is 148. Uh, the specific gravity of the water is 1, and the gamma water is uh, 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. So we convert the weight uh, of the water to a volume. Also, we are going to do the same process for the cement volume. 
I'm going to use this formula again. The weight of the vo volume is 334. The specific gravity of the uh, uh, cement is 3.15. Remember, we mentioned this information in uh, chapter number six when we talked about the cement. And again, the gamma water is 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. And also we have the air volume is 7%. 7%, it means that the volume is 0 0.07 uh, uh, cubic meter per cubic meter because we assume that we are working with a volume equal 1 cubic meter. And uh, the coarse aggregate, regarding the coarse aggregate, again, I'm going to use this formula. The weight of the coarse aggregate is 1168. Uh, 2.621 is the specific gravity uh, which is given in the information and 100, 1000 again is the uh, uh, density of the water. Now I'm going to add this value plus that value plus that value and plus that value. We are going to call this subtotal volume. The total volume is 1. So now in order to determine the uh, fine aggregate volume is going to be equal 1 minus the subtotal volume. The answer came out to be 0 0.233 cubic meter per cubic meter. Per cubic meter because we assume that we have uh, the volume of the concrete is one cubic meter. So this value is a volume. I need to, to get it back to weight. So um, I need to convert this value into weight again. So this time I'm going to solve for the weight of the aggregate. The, the weight of the aggregate is going to be the volume of the aggregate times the specific gravity of the aggregate, which is a given, times the uh, uh, density of the water. The answer came out to be 599 kilogram per cubic meter. So now we determine the uh, weight of the fine aggregate. So in step number 10, we are going to apply the moisture uh, corrections. Uh, for the uh, coarse aggregate, uh, the value is 1160 kilogram per cubic meter. But again, this value is in dry conditions. And we have moisture content. The moisture content is 1.5%. So I need to put the effect of the water. In order to put the effect of the water, I'm going to uh, uh, multiply this value by 1.015. So if I'm going to multiply by this value, then I'm going to get the effect of the water. Similarly, I'm going to apply the same, the same steps for the fine aggregate. We need 599 kilogram per cubic meter for the aggregate, but again, this value is in dry condition, and the moisture content is 4%, so this value should be multiplied by 1.04 in order to determine the dry weight plus the weight of the water. And the answer came out to be uh, uh, 623 kilogram per cubic meter. So now we managed to correct the weight of the coarse aggregate and the final aggregate because of the uh, moisture. This one is the actual moisture content. Finally, I need to determine uh, the uh, uh, correction for the mixing water. For the mixing water, uh, the, 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 uh, the value that we got for the uh, water content is 148 kilogram per cubic meter, this value here. But I need to either subtract or add because of the uh, moisture conditions. So let's get back to the information here. So here I have the moisture content. The moisture content is 1.5%, while the uh, absorption is 0 0.4. Since this value is more than uh, that value, which means that I need to subtract, right? And regarding the fine aggregate, the uh, moisture content is 4% and the absorption is 0 0.8. Again, since the uh, moisture content is more than the absorption content, I need to subtract. And uh, in order to subtract, I need to know the free water. The free water is going to be the moisture content minus the absorption. Here also the moisture content times the uh, 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 minus the absorption. So let's get back to uh, the final step here. So here the value of the uh, water, I need to subtract the moisture content. This one is 1.5. I need to divide it by 100. This value is uh, uh, 0 0.4. I need to divide it by 100. This one minus that one uh, is the free, represents the free moisture. And we know that the free moisture is the weight of the uh, water over the dry weight of the uh, aggregate. I need to multiply by the dry weight of the coarse aggregate so that I get the amount of the water. Similarly, I'm going to do the same process 
for the fine aggregate. Uh, this value here represent the moisture content, the actual moisture content. It was 4%. I need to divide it by 100. Here I have the uh, 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 the absorption. The absorption is 0.8%. I need to divide it by 100. And then in order to get the amount of the water, I need to uh, multiply by the dry weight of the fine aggregate. So I need to subtract here a water because of the coarse aggregate. I need to subtract here uh, a water because of the fine aggregate. So now the final uh, uh, water content came out to be 116 kilogram per cubic meter. It was 148 kilogram. But because we have a water more than the SSD condition, we needed to subtract a water because of the coarse aggregate and because of the fine aggregate. And the answer came out to be 116 kilogram per cubic meter. So now I have a summary for my ingredients uh, for uh, one cubic meter. Uh, the water is 116 kilogram per one cubic meter. The uh, cement is 334 kilogram per one cubic meter. The fine aggregate is 623 uh, kilogram per one cubic meter. And the coarse aggregate and the admixtures. So now I need to work with these values in order to produce uh, a mix that can meet my requirements. Another step here before, be, before we finish this uh, lecture. Uh, in the question, uh, they ask about the absolute volume method. But what if they ask about using the weight method? The only difference is going to be in step number nine. In step number nine, we convert everything to a volume. But if you, ask, if you were asked to use the, to solve the example using the weight method, in this case, we are going to use table 7.10. In, in table 7.10, we are going to estimate the value of the total uh, freshly mixed concrete. So, for example, the nominal uh, maximum aggregate size is 25. This column for the non-air entrain, so I'm going to skip this column, while this column for air entrainer. So, the total weight is going to be uh, 2311 kilogram per cubic meter. This represents the total weight of the uh, uh, concrete. So then I'm going to sub subtract all the ingredients. Then I'm going to get the value of the fine aggregate. Again, this value is not going to be similar to the value here. The, the volume method is not going to give me the same values as the uh, uh, weight method regarding the fine aggregate. Okay? While the correction is the same. The correction is going to be the same. So I'm going to stop here at this point so if you have uh, any uh, questions please ask me